Hi and welcome back to the channel. I thought today I'd give you a, an update on what's happening happening on the Rover P4. Uh, in the last episode I showed you some of the corrosion to the uh, near side chassis um, where the bumper support from the chassis mounts to and uh, you could see there's quite a bit of corrosion there that needs uh, some remedial work and a fair bit of welding. Um, so I've had a look a bit further around the car and I also showed you that the splash plate um, for the front wing is corroded and that needs replacing. So I thought instead of trying to uh, fiddle my way through repairing the chassis with not much access then I thought I'd go ahead and remove the radiator which I'll do later in this episode and then I'll remove both wings and that will give me access to most of the front chassis so that one I can tidy as much of the chassis up as I can with good access and secondly uh, I need to have a look at the engine because there's a few leaks on it and with both wings off as you probably know there's really good access. Um, so what have I done to try and get a little bit more access before I decided to do what I've just explained. Um, I removed this part here from the centre of the chassis. Now I wasn't sure what it was uh, for or what function it served but looking at the parts manual it's the jacking point for the front of the car and uh, that just needs cleaning and painting. The next thing I removed was the bumper iron support bracket that attaches to the chassis. Now as you could see on the one on the other side uh, where that mounted it was all corroded and that bracket needs uh, replacing uh, but I have to apply a bit of heat to enable me to remove this and it looks pretty much the same as the one on uh, the near side so that just needs a good old clean and repainting. The other thing that I removed and I'll show you a quick clip in a moment is the anti-roll bar as you can see there so yeah that again just needs a good clean and I think I'll probably replace all the bushes uh, because uh, this part here and here that's in pretty good condition so uh, yeah that'll be repainted plus the brackets and where one of these brackets actually attaches on this side of the chassis that looks as though uh, where this bolts into might need a bit of welding work as well but I'll show you that in, a, in another video once I've got all of the aforesaid mentioned items off the car. So the other thing I'll probably do is uh, have a look at the suspension I might take that apart, uh, replace bushes and the brake calipers uh, are looking very rusty indeed and again I'll show you that in a, another video coming up soon. Um, so yeah, I'll put a quick short video of removing the anti-roll bar and then I'll get on and remove the radiator and it's, it'll just be a short video. Um, and one thing I looked for on YouTube while I was considering what to do was a video of the removal of the Rover P4 wings and I can't find one anywhere. So um, just for my own records and uh, for entertainment value and if anyone's looking how to do it without resorting to the manual, then this that might be a video for you. So right, instead of me rambling on, I'm going to get into uh, removing the radiator. 
Okay, the first thing I'm going to do now is, as I said, remove the anti-roll bar. Um, I thought it would be possible to remove it without uh, jacking the car up, but it's not. Uh, because you have to lower, as you raise the car up and with the wheels off, this lower spring mount uh, will drop and allow this uh, drop link which attaches to the anti-roll bar and then to the uh, spring mount. You can actually take this apart, I'll show you in a minute, and then that allows you to remove this. So I've just got to undo the next, now I've just got to undo the opposite side and then we should be able to remove the anti-roll bar. Okay, uh, here is the uh, anti-roll bar removed. I did only have to remove the one uh, drop link and I to remove it, it's just a matter of fiddling it around. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fairly simple operation, just six, six bolts to undo. So as you'd expect, the, removing the radiator is a fairly simple process. Uh, the first thing that needs to be removed is this bracket here that bolts on there, the bolts on there and on the other side and that supports this part of the wiring loom and the two connector pods there if that's the right terminology. Uh, then we remove in order to bleed the radiator we remove this top cap and then if we look down here there is a drain tap just there it's quite difficult to, oh that's all right it's loosened off now so that needs to be done then we can remove the top hose here which is easy to access and not quite so easy to access and then just at the bottom there, you can just about see it, I think. There it is, is the bottom hose. Now it would be easier for me to remove the, that hose from there and then remove uh, the complete hose after it's after the radiator has been removed. Oops. Then the next thing we need to do to remove the radiator is undo the bolts and those from the in the engine bay. And the same on this side, one, two, three. And then hopefully the radiator should just pull out, leaving the radiator support, radiator support in place. And as you can see, the bonnet stay also locates into the uh, radiator support bracket. So without further ado, we'll carry on and get that job done and see if it's as easy as I'm anticipating. Okay, so the first thing to do is remove the radiator cap. So the next thing to do is to drain all the uh, coolant out of the radiator. Now this valve here that does that uh, was quite, wasn't seized, but it was very difficult to turn with a hand, so I had to get a uh, not a socket, a, a ring spanner on there and just gently lever it up. So there we go. Out comes the coolant. Right, while well, the last few drops of coolant are coming out of the radiator, I might as well remove this hose first uh, and then we'll remove uh, this support bar for the wiring bits and pieces. Actually this hose is a little bit too small. Not this one but that one. There's hardly any thread so I'll replace that one when I come to put it back together.
Right, that hose mo has been removed. Okay, so I'll just put a cover over there to stop anything going in. Right, now to undo these two bolts, pull that back, and then we can start undoing the nuts holding the radiator in. Okay, so I've loosened off those bolts. Oops. Just put the nuts back on so I don't lose it. So now that's out the way, I will take these off, as I said earlier in the video, and uh, I've taken photographs of where all the wires go. So now it's a matter of undoing, I think it's one, two, three, that side, I think, and three that side. So now it's just a matter of removing one, two, three, and the same the other side, and the radiator should pull out. At least that's a theory. So I won't bore you with watching me undo nuts, so I'll come back to when I will be pulling the radiator out. Okay, that's all of those bolts undone, and in actual fact, uh, it's loose now the radiator, and also, those bolts held on the uh, fan cowl. Uh, so now all I've got to do is remove the radiator, then we can remove the fan cowl here. I've got a feeling this might be a bit awkward. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention is that there are two, two studs here which should hold the radiator down as well. But uh, there weren't any nuts on them and the threads are going quite rusty. But anyway, that's by the by. Uh, so let's see if this actually pulls out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've left the bottom hose on. Uh -huh. I thought someone might have spotted that. Anyway, I'll switch you off while I undo that. So that was rather fiddly, but in the end, I managed to remove it. But uh, note to oneself, invest in some long reach screwdrivers. <laughs> Is stopping us. Let's have a closer look. Okay, so there's something I forgot to do, and I should have read the manual again, which I did before I actually started the job, but getting old, my memory is going. So, what I didn't do is remove the fan. So, now it should just, the cowl should just pull out, and then the radiator. Let's see if it works this time. Right, I have finally removed the fan cowl and that was a right pig to remove. Um, there was hardly any space left at all to remove it. Um, but that's what it says in the manual. Um, so anyway, it's out now. So now hopefully we're finally in a position to remove the radiator. Let's see 
if this actually works or not. It looks like it will. And there we go, radiator removed. That was a lot trickier than I thought it would be. There was only a few steps removing it, but uh, anyway, there we go. So I'll grab the camera and we'll see what sort of state that lot's in. Okay, finally, after a bit of a struggle, to be honest, uh, for what seemed like a fairly straightforward and easy job, which it is, but it was just a little bit fiddly. Um, that's how some of these jobs can go sometimes. But anyway, as you can see, it's removed and we've got some rust at the bottom. Now, I think this is going to be uh, savable to be honest there's a lot of rust down here god knows when the last time uh, this was apart uh, so now we've got access to this part of the cross member uh, and i'll be getting all of the under seal off that and see what it's like underneath um, but first of all i'm going to remove this radiator support um, one thing I did find while messing about a couple of days ago, uh, getting some of the rust out of the uh, chassis rail, is a nice 7mm spanner, which doesn't look in particularly good condition, so I'll throw that away, and a nut, sorry, a bolt, which looks way past best. Anyway. That's a bit of a wrap up for today and we'll do some more in the coming days. Next job will be wings off. See you in the next one. Oh, by the way, please like and subscribe and comment. Always look forward to the comments. See ya.